Absolutely. It's very, very urgent in terms of dealing with the climate crisis. We all agree that the climate crisis is too big, it is too serious, and if there is a time that there was need for more action, it is now. Thank you very much. Let me welcome you to Nairobi. My name is Sophie Mbogwa. This is the global, the green climate finance uh, private sector investment um, conference. It's a two-day event. Um, it's taking place here in Nairobi alongside the Africa Climate Summit and Africa Climate Weeks that will be taking place within this week. And we are, my name is Sophie Mbogwa. I will be your MC. I'm the founder of Africa Climate Conversations. And so today we will, these two days we will be talking about looking into how do we move from investment to impact. Because we recognize that the climate crisis is too big and too serious. The private sector is key, very key. But then again, the investments that the private sector has been, the assets that have been moving, but then the private sector also needs to do more. Because then the, the, the urgency to adapt to climate change and also mitigate against further action, uh, impact is urgent more than ever. But ladies and gen gentlemen, so what I'm, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the GPIC uh, program. It's a GCF flagship program. It's um, a, an annual event that is organized by the Green Climate Fund. It is bring together private sector and the public sector together, you know, in, in global leaders from private sector and public sector to explore innovative approaches, you know, to address market failures and forge new partnership and that mobilize finance scale for urgent action in developing countries. And so this year, this is the sixth annual meeting. So it will be the two days conference will be um, shining spotlight on the GCF private sector direct access entities and the FAD wider partner network, as well as provide an opportunity to you all to engage, you know, with entrepreneurs, developers, financiers, and all it, and, and investors within this today. So we are going to have side events and plenary sessions. But before I, you know, tell you more about what we'll be having in the next two days, I would want to invite. Um, the GCF Executive Director, Mafalda Duat. Thank you so much. It's actually, we're so excited to see your first, you know, trip, uh, you know, uh, as your, as, as and, um, ED, and we're so excited to hear from you. So please, take this time. Thank you. Oh, wow. Thank you, Sophie. And thank you, everyone. Uh, welcome. Um, to the GCF's Private Investment for Climate Conference, getting the name right. Um, so as Sophie said, I'm Mafalda Duart. Uh, I've recently joined the GCF as the new executive director. It's an honor and privilege uh, to take on this uh, role and these responsibilities and work with many of you um, in um, unlocking many more, many more, much more investments, um, climate investments in developing countries. I also like to thank um, our host country, Kenya, and the people uh, of, of the country uh, for, for hosting us and for all of the hospitality. Um, I've already been feeling it. Uh, I've been here for three days and I was out in the country. Um, I, I'll speak about that in a bit. Feeling, I, I've already felt the warmth uh, of the people. Thank you very much. Um, it's always great for me to be back in Africa. Uh, it's all, it always feels like coming back home. This is where I started my professional journey. This is where I've worked the most uh, in my career. Um, this is where I had my three daughters. Um, so it's always very special to come back to this uh, continent. And it's a real pleasure to be opening the conference. Uh, we launched, GCF launched this uh, uh, conference in 2018. And as Sophie said, the objective is very much to bring private sector and the public sector with uh, one mission, this really critical mission of accelerating private finance for climate action in developing countries at scale. There's no need to go over the so much hashed arguments that uh, we cannot meet our ambition and our 
climate calls and the Paris Agreement calls if we don't mobilize private sector. Um, it's in the trillions, the levels of investments that are necessary in developing countries. Uh, and we know we are fa falling very short of that. Um, we are seeing increased investment levels, of course, both from the public sector and the private sector side, but um, we are nowhere near where we need to be. But we also hear very often the capital is there. There are trillions of dollars in assets under management, um, held by different types of uh, institutions. So we really need to unlock that domestic and international capital um, for climate investments. It's also not um, unknown to anybody, why is it important to focus on developing countries? This is where most of the infrastructure investment gap is. This is where we'll see most of the infrastructure investments happening. And we really need to make sure that uh, these investments don't lock us into a high carbon, low resilient um, infrastructure stock. Um, it's also where most of the population in the world will live. We are near this point uh, where most of the GDP is, um, where most of the energy demand is, um, but also where the impacts of climate change are being disproportionately felt. So we know, and many of you today here are private sector, uh, investors, developers, um, we know that you have an unparalleled capacity to deliver the finance that is needed to really create these markets and to spur the innovation across all sectors, but we also know that to unlock this potential, we need to address key barriers and risks. And this is where the GCF role comes in, and it's a very exciting one. This is GCF's mandate, um, and, and why GCF is so uniquely placed um, in terms of catalyzing private sector investments. Um, we have an interesting portfolio already, $4.5 billion of GCF investments in private sector. Um, out of 15, um, now out of 12.8, um, 4.5 of, of the portfolio is private sector. Um, and with this 4.5, we are unlocking 15.3 billion of total investments. The interesting thing, and uh, the more I know about GCF, this is what uh, I get excited about, um, is, is really the flexibility. The flexibility uh, of the investments. GCF is really well placed because it can provide grants, equity, guarantees, the whole entire spectrum of the financial toolkit, um, and, and really come in as First loss, anchor investment, um, so you name it, you know, uh, GCF can, can, can play that role of, of tackling the risks and, and unlocking um, investments. Um, so that scale and that uh, flexibility. Another thing that I find extremely interesting about GCF is the fact that it can work with institutions that other financial institutions are not necessarily working with or are not well placed to work with. GCF uh, is also has a very unique um, and has this extraordinary potential because it is already doing and it can do a lot more in terms of reaching the most vulnerable. And I, I saw that myself. In fact, this is the reason why uh, I also decided to, um, to make sure that the first projects I would visit and right here in Kenya would be projects that are helping the most vulnerable communities through private sector investments. So I had the, the pleasure and the honor to join Acumen, um, Jacqueline and her team, Araf, Tamar, the team, uh, some of the companies that they're investing in and visit 
some of the smallholder farmers that are being supported here in Kenya over the weekend. And seeing firsthand um, what solar powered water pumps can do, um, seeing firsthand what regenerative agricultural practices can do to these farmers in terms of productivity and increase in income and savings and asset building. Um, and hearing these men and women speak about how it's transforming their lives. So this is really important because I think it's really important to demystify this notion that the private sector does not invest in these communities, in these countries and these communities, that it cannot make a return on the investment, um, and it, it cannot do it in particular when it comes to adaptation. It can, and some of you are doing it here and in other places as well. Um, so, but you know, we are at this point in time where we need to do a lot more. And this is the commitment we have, and this is the commitment that I have as we embark on our next programming cycle. Um, our next programming cycle will be from 2024 to 2027. It is our commitment and my commitment, and I know my team the same, to double down and really redouble efforts in terms of mobilizing private investments in developing countries and mobilizing private investments to reach the most vulnerable. Today, you are here, you will be discussing, this is the whole objective of this event, is to discuss ideas and innovative approaches and projects that you are thinking about or already working on. Um, so I encourage you to take the maximum advantage of the event and, and talk to each other um, and learn from each other uh, and talk with us and others about your ideas, what can be done. Um, and then let's quickly mobilize ourselves after this to turn this into action because action is what we actually need. And, and we need to move uh, quickly. Uh, the time is on, not on our side. Certainly it's not on our side when it comes to mitigation, but it's not on our side either because we are leaving behind and, and really not supporting millions of people that are suffering quite a lot from climate change impacts and not getting the, the, the support that they deserve and they need. Um, this is only possible, I'm going to close soon, this is only possible because GCF is a demonstration of what the public and private sector can do together. We are managing public sector funds from a, from a range of uh, shareholders, U.S. you will hear from Alexia and the Secretary of the U.S. Treasury, um, but many others. Um, and, and it is this public capital that we are trying to use as efficiently as possible to really tackle the constraints faced by, by private sector. So this, this is a great example of this partnership and the need for the public and the private sector to come together. We are right now uh, in our replenishment, uh, our second replenishment um, process. Um, and we are quite confident that we've seen already great signs of ambition from the shareholders that have already pledged. We are very confident that we will hear more. In fact, even during these days here in the Africa Climate Summit, um, and, and hopefully with this renewed ambition, we will be able to do a lot more together. And I look forward to uh, working with many of you to, to unlock this potential that uh, is in these rooms and with many other partners out there. Enjoy the conference and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much, Mafalda. 
and absolutely the whole issue of developing nations, it's very important as countries develop, how do that resilient become, that development become resilient in the future. And Alexia is with us today. Um, the US is a founding member and has a very strong, been a very strong supporter of the GCF. And so we're very honored to have you today. And Alexia is, Miss Alexia Latatour is the GCF champion, and she's the Assistant Secretary for International Trade and Development at the US Department of the Treasury. And I'm going to welcome you kindly, take the floor and make your remarks. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sophie. I could not think of a better way to launch the Africa Climate Summit um, week than starting with this event here with the Green Climate Fund. The United States indeed is a champion of the work of the Green Climate Fund. I'm very sorry that I could not join the field visit that you mentioned, uh, Mafalda, um, yesterday, but I did visit a Green Climate Fund uh, project in Zambia earlier this year with Secretary Yellen um, that indeed had a lot of the features that you were describing with Falda. And I'll share a quick anecdote. Um, we met with some women smallholder farmers and the secretary was talking to them about their work, about the changing climate, how their, the, 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 um, they were having uh, less harvest than usual. And so we spoke about all those challenges, but they were also managing sort of a village and savings bank. And at one point, one of the smallholder farmers said to the secretary, you know, we're secretary of the treasurers as well, and pointed to their lockbox um, and, and the management of their funds to do their, their, their work. So really love seeing GCF in, 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 in action. Thank you, Kavita. Thank you, Mafalda, for this invitation. Um, we know Mafalda really well from her time as the executive director of the Climate Investment Funds, and we're thrilled that she's now heading GCF. Uh, she brought so much uh, tenacity leadership determination at the SIFs that I know that she will bring here as well. She helped to secure financing for the SIFs. She helped to bring innovation to the SIFs. And perhaps most importantly, she really focused on results with the priorities of the recipient countries in mind. And so that focus on the actual needs and priorities of the recipient countries, I know she will continue to bring here at the GCF. So really delighted, welcome Mafalda. In, in, in having you at the GCF. And I would be remiss to not also thank Henry Gonzalez for his brilliant management of the transition period. So thank you very much, um, Henry. So the GCF has come a long way since it its establishment in 2010, when it was such an important part of um, creating um, a pathway for Paris alignment um, um, commitments and, and NDCs. Today, the United States sees the GCF as an absolutely central part of the climate financial architecture. And it's a pivotal moment for the GCF. Just mentioned the new leadership. It's a replenishment year. We also heard this. And the GCF just recently adopted a new strategic update that I'd like to touch on. The US has been proud to co-chair the GCF at this pivotal time with Pakistan. We want, we need to see the GCF continue to be a vanguard in the climate financial architecture, taking risks, really promoting catalytic uh, instruments, bringing solutions to the hardest climate finance uh, problems, focusing and reaching the most vulnerable amongst us to climate change as well. And so we have seen um, in the strategic plan that I just mentioned, an evolution, I think, of the GCF from bringing, being a taker of projects that its network has brought to it, to actually helping to set the agenda to going out there and developing the pipeline of the projects that really will be first of their kind to move the agenda forward. And we think that proactive role of developing the pipelines, building capacity, 
creating enabling environments is exactly the right role for the GCF. And there's two priorities in particular in the strategic update that I'd like to underscore. The first one is around increasing access to finance. The second one is very linked to the topic of this conference, which is mobilizing private finance. So first on the issue of increasing access to uh, uh, climate finance, particularly for the most vulnerable. We have seen uh, the GCF at the strategic, operational, and programmatic, program, programmatic level really make great strides. Uh, so for example, we have seen the GCF slash the time it takes from first project review to first disbursement from 26 months to 11 months. We can do more, but that is real progress. We have seen the simplified um, application process. We have seen more capacity building to countries so that they can access uh, finance. These are really important steps. There is more, sorry, you cannot rest on your laurels. There is more to do. We need to continue to see a less cumbersome application process. We know that not enough funds still are flowing to direct access um, entities. And we know that the capacity building that is provided does not always still fully meet the needs of, of countries. We also want to see and look forward to the updated readiness program that is so critical to making sure that countries can appropriately access, uh, access finance. Um, and then I want to talk a little bit about um, the, second, the second goal, which is the goal of um, mobilizing, um, mobilizing uh, finance, sorry, mobilizing private finance. So the GCF's role should really be to redirect capital flows through both, both push, mobilizing private finance at scale, and pull efforts, increasing the capacity of domestic markets to absorb finance through the capacity building I mentioned, through planning and supporting entrepreneurship. And capacity building for both private and public financial institutions should go hand in hand with financial instruments like equity, and early seed capital that will allow homegrown companies to scale quickly and to access broader pools of finance um, that can be now un un unlocked. On the mobilization side, this means finding ways to unlock at scale capital that is currently sitting on the sidelines. We need to mobilize more private capital and to do so more effectively and efficiently. Now, GCF's recent funding proposal, the Infrastructure Climate Resilience Fund, brought by the African Finance Corporation, is exactly the type of project that addresses a key part of the challenge, how we had luck with some $65 trillion, give or take, held globally by pension funds and sovereign wealth funds. On the public side, we need to mainstream climate into domestic financial systems, and give countries the tools they need to be able to finance their priorities and to raise their climate ambition. We as contributors will never understand their priorities as well as they do. The Blue Green Bank in Barbados is a fantastic example. It will leverage limited public funds to both finance domestic priorities, but also to work with domestic institutions banks, credit unions, insurance companies, to teach them to do the same. That's sustainable finance. Finally, the strategic plan establishes resilience results. My father spoke about results. Results targets for the most vulnerable countries, an absolutely key priority for the United States and a core competency, of course, of the Green Climate Fund. The Green Climate Fund is a priority for the United States to help realize President Biden's prepare plan launched at COP26 to help more than half a billion people in emerging markets and in developing countries, and especially in Africa, adapt to and manage a changing climate um, this decade. So I hope you've understood the enthusiasm that the United States has for the Green Climate Fund. Now, the Green Climate Fund, of course, as I said, is a central part of a broader architecture. And so I would like to end with a challenge to everybody in the fund, as well as the new head of the fund. 
you need to not only continue to innovate and improve the fund, you need to help make sure that the entire climate financial architecture works as best as it can to streamline across the funds so that countries can access available finance more easily, to understand each other as funds and the comparative advantage of each fund so that we're actually covering the wealth of needs as efficiently and as effectively as possible. And the GCF has a leadership role in thinking not just about itself, but how it plays with the broader ecosystem because urgency, efficiency, and effectiveness are at stake. I am thrilled that we'll see all the main funds have a joint pavilion at COP. The symbolism is powerful, but the symbolism is not sufficient. So at COP, standing together in this pavilion, I also want to hear what you will be doing together as funds to optimize the architecture, to improve the ease of access to countries, to be as effective, not only as a Green Climate Fund, but as a member of a community on which countries depend incredibly. So here's the challenge. See you at COP. Have a great conference. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alexia. And I think because that access makes sure that if you, there's access, then what is happening on the ground, right? And that's exactly what Jacqueline would be telling us, you know, there's Acumen and GCF has this partnership and has been doing amazing work that Mafal just referred to. And I think it's that particular point I'd want to invite you. Jacqueline Novogratz is the CEO and is the founder of Acumen. And please welcome and for your remarks. Thank you. Thanks so much, and it's great to be here. Um, I'm thrilled to be standing here for many reasons. I'm just going to mention two. One is that um, the Green Climate Fund is our most strategic, most catalytic um, partner, where a lot of trust has been built over the last seven years. And I just want to say thank you to all of the team members who are here and have supported us, to Secretary Latortu's um, idea of co-creation. Co and second, I also want to um, welcome and celebrate Mafalda. Uh, to see a leader of a big institution as her first move, immerse with the people that institution is here to serve, hear challenges from their perspective is such a powerful example of the moral imagination in action. And it's the kind of leadership we need to see in all of our institutions, particularly given that we all know the disproportionate impact of climate on the poor and on the vulnerable. So welcome again, Mafalda. I'm the founder and CEO of Acumen, as you've heard. We invest in solutions uh, to poverty at the nexus of climate and poverty across the whole spectrum of capital from angel to patient capital to impact investing, four verticals, education, healthcare, energy, and agriculture. Over the past 22 years, our investments have impacted over 500 million low-income people. And that has given us a front row seat to seeing the ravages of climate on the poorest. But so has it reaffirmed our commitment and our belief in the power of private innovation with the right kind of capital and partnership to solve some of our biggest problems. I want to focus on three points today. The first is the, the power of the private sector, which you've already heard two powerful women talk about. Um, look at the sectors in which we are operating and how the private sector is the innovator and actually listens so deeply to low-income people take energy. When we started investing 15 years ago, 1.5 billion people had no access. That number has been reduced because of government and because of private sector. 
for the very poorest, and especially when you look at the continent of Africa, an enormous number, 230, 450 million low-income people have gotten access to off-grid solar and other kinds of solar products, largely because of private sector innovation. When we first invested, there was no uh, solar sector to even think of. And it took almost 10 years for companies like D-Lite and BioLite to get to a point where they were have rev having revenues in the tens or millions or more profitable, and they still couldn't access impact investing. That was when we first came to the Green Climate Fund to build Kawi Safi, whose MD is um, Amar Inamdar, who's here today. A $60 million, $70 million um, fund, the first of its kind, focused on helping to build, strengthen the whole solar energy ecosystem. And what we've seen by taking high-risk investments and accompanying those company, companies within an ecosystem over time is not only light and electricity, the dignity that comes with it, jobs and careers, but also the adjacent possible. We've seen those companies create an incredible distribution network not only for solar products, but other critical services like cook stoves and, cell and smartphones and solar televisions. Solar televisions are important because I was just talking to an, uh, a team, Achille Networks, which is one of our education investments, and they told us that the reason that they've been able to create Kenya's first and only all education television network and reach children in nine million households is because of solar television. And so at this point, you can start to see an off-grid solar future that is not only productive and digni dignified, but beautiful. We're seeing similar possibilities and new realities in agriculture, especially, as Mafalda said, as it relates to building resilience, adaptation among smallholder farmers. These stories are long-term. And about 12 years ago, we invested in it a chicken company in Ethiopia, Ethio Chicken, when there was really no chicken industry to speak of. Again, over those years, that company created a business model that was impacting millions of smallholder farmers through a, a business model that started by selling thousand day old chicks, uh, in, day old chicks in batches of a thousand to agents who would turn around and sell two, three chickens at a time to smallholder farmers. By the time Ethio Chicken was reaching millions of smallholder farmers and increasing their income and building, an, again, a network of agents, it became clear that this was a business model that would benefit many countries across the continent. That's when Acumen Resilient Agriculture Fund was created, again, with the Green Climate Fund, anchoring it. Arif then, run by um, MD Tamar Alragi, who's here, um, committed to the chicken company to go to 10 African countries. It's only been a couple of years, and already that company has now has operations in Kenya, Rwanda, Uganda, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, and Ghana. And this year, if you look at the global constellation, that set of companies has 16,000 agents, some of whom are earning $10,000 a year or more. They are buying 50 million day old chicks, selling to millions of farmers whose chickens this year alone are producing 5 billion eggs. That's the definition of enabling adaptation and resilience because now smallholder farmers, some of the poorest farmers, have access to income, to jobs, but also to home nutrition for free or at very, very affordable levels. Yet, despite opportunities to unlock human potential in this way that help people and planet, the majority of capital continues to flow to where it is safe, not necessarily where it is most impactful. And that's my second point. Too many D DFIs wait for others to provide guarantees or first loss before they will move, if they will move. They shy away from long-term commitments. And if they do invest, 
When things get difficult, and we all know, they do get difficult. Too often, the DFIs are the first to pull their capital. Indeed, 16 years of investing in energy and agriculture for the poorest and the most vulnerable have taught us that capital is most expensive to people who can least afford it. And that runs counter to our collective mission of creating a green and critically a just energy future. What's needed are more financial institutions willing to take risk, provide concessional capital and grants. And this is where GCF stands apart, truly. GCF is, as Mafalda said, is willing to take that first loss, provide that guarantee, co-create, enable grants, to bring in other partners, recognizing we can't do this alone. And the partnership between GCF and Acumen has truly been a game changer. GCF has anchored five of Acumen's funds, all working at the intersection of climate and poverty. They've approved over 200, nearly $200 million as an anchor across those funds that have allowed now almost $600 million in investment. As you've heard, those investments bring considerable change, but so do they bring leverage. Amar, who runs Kawisafi, told me that for every dollar GCF invested into Kawisafi, another $30 has gone into the companies and the markets they've served. I thought it might be useful to describe just one of the creative structuring that uh, GCF helped us build. Acumen's Resilient Agriculture Fund. It was the first of its kind, an all equity fund uh, focused on smallholders. And so GCF actually provided a 50% first loss guarantee. But that wasn't all. Adaptation was quite new to us. And so GCF helped us work with Winrock to build a framework to understand adaptation, see it, and also later then supported us to build a system of impact metrics not just for changes in jobs, et cetera, but actually beginning to measure changes in adapt adaptive ability and resilience. Side by side, they anchored a $7 million technical assistance grant-backed facility so that our program uh, relationship managers could actually embed a company, these companies, and it's made all the difference. And we're currently working on another initiative with GCF and others in this room, room. As I mentioned, 16 years of energy investing through Kawi Safi and through Acumen's early investments has brought off-grid solar electricity to over 230 million people. We still have 700 million people without access to off-grid electricity. And so we're working together to build an initiative that will bring electricity to uh, to uh, the 220 million people, largely uh, who are completely left out of this story, largely across uh, 20 uh, African nations in the most vulnerable, the most fragile economies. We know the business models work, and we also know that they won't work with business as usual. And so once again, GCF has given us first loss capital, grant capital, and impact incentive capital so that we can structure capital in ways that bring companies into these markets and provide the incentives to enable them to stay. As I said, we can't do this alone. And so it's been thrilling to work as well with Power Africa, the World Bank, philanthropists, commercial investors. And that partnership is where we see power growing. I know many of you in this room are pushing the boundaries of business as usual. We talk about it. We know we have to reimagine our systems. The good news is that we have the skills. Goodness knows we have the capital to solve our toughest problems. What's needed is that moral imagination I was talking about at the beginning and the will to make change. And that starts for all of us by seeing ourselves as part of the problem as well as part of the solution. At the end of Saturday, when Mafalda and I were visiting a company called Farmworks, uh, we ended up speaking to two older women farmers, Faith 
and Sarah. Sarah was 72, a great spirit. And I, I asked them how working on this regen with this regenerative agriculture with this company had changed their lives. And Sarah said, you know, I used to live with such poverty, and now I have comfort. And I said, this is a strange question, but do you, could you articulate for me when you knew that you were moving from that level of poverty into more safety? And she smiled and said, there isn't a line. But she said, when you are really poor, you always feel strained. You always feel stressed. You don't know where you're going to get the money for school fees or bus fare or sometimes even to feed your children. You make bad decisions. You sometimes get angry too quickly. Now she said, I feel comfort. I'm not so strained. And I said, well, what does that feel like on the inside? And she said, that feels like freedom. For me, freedom is dignity. It's choice, it's opportunity, it's the ability to make your own decisions. She and Faith work so hard and earn so little, and you can see what a little bit of stability does to help them change their lives. It therefore behooves us to do whatever we can with the kind of urgency that we know we can bring, the right kind of capital with more risk, more transparency, longer term, more concessionary, including grants. And, and it's within our collective hands. I certainly couldn't be prouder on behalf of Acumen to partner with GCF. I feel deeply grateful, look forward to partnering with many more of you as we build a future that truly is greener, more inclusive, and more beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jacqueline. And that marks the end of the opening session. And so I just want to take a few minutes to for just some, some housekeeping. So as I mentioned, this uh, it's a two-day event. We'll have sessions by um, plenaries and side events. So plenaries will be held here. Uh, the side events will be held outside, just outside the door where you are having the coffee. And also uh, coffee will be held right within the, the area. The washroom are on my right side, um, outside there. And then there is a, an email that you, all the participants, the delegates were sent to. It's uh, a Hoover, W-H-O-V-A app. It's a, a very great application that actually helps you in terms of connection, networking, understanding who is attending. And um, so you can also actually network on that particular um, Hoover app and you'll know what is the program, what is coming up, and so you know what is actually going on um, in the next few minutes. But then, before we go for coffee, um, I would want to take this opportunity to invite the director of the private sector facility at the GCF, Madam Kavita Sinha, who has some announcement. Thank you, Mafalda, Alexia, and Jacqueline for that excellent welcome to the opening of the GPEG. Uh, we are all energized. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Kavita Sen. I'm the director of the private sector facility. In keeping with the theme of uh, today of shining a spotlight on the direct access entities and poverty and how GCF plays a catalytic role, I'm proud uh, to announce a project preparation facility of $1.24 million at $1.24 million uh, grant for low cost, low emission housing for climate, uh, for affordable housing platform across secondary cities in Morocco to our uh, DAE partner, Ajitari Wafa. This is a first time grant to Ajitari Wafa. Ajitari Wafa is, as you might know, it's one of the top commercial banks in Africa. Our grant enables them to extend their services to those that they may not be able to access directly without our support. 
Uh, this has been a phenomenal partnership. We are proud of that. We, um, their uh, agreement of partnership with us went effective only in May, and within less than six months, we were able to approve this grant uh, so that they can develop a funding proposal to bring to us uh, that will help create low, affordable, low emission housing across secondary cities in Morocco. Uh, it's expected that the total project size will be about 160 million euros, and that the PPF grant will enable them to do a market study do climate assessment studies, uh, do environmental safeguard uh, assessments, legal and pre-contract arrangements, develop a theory of change and log frames. With that, we, we uh, expect that they will bring these proposals to us within uh, nine to 10 months, and it will enter a cycle for approval. Very, very proud of this partnership with Ajit Wafa. Unfortunately, the team could not join us here today, but we thank the whole team, uh, the GCF team, as well as the Ajitari Wafa team, to be able to bring this grant very quickly to fruition. So please join me in celebrating this first grant to Ajitari Wafa, a new DAE, and if the project goes through, it will be a new project for Morocco from private sector. Please join me in congratulating them. Our second announcement today is uh, by another of our DAE, and that I will let the uh, DA do the announcement themselves. CRDB Tanzania, we had approved the uh, project for CRDB Tanzania's Agriculture Climate Adaptation Technology Deployment Program. It was a first project for CRDB. It was approved in October of 2021 by our board, and the FAA became effective in 2022. The project has now reached a critical milestone and is about um, to be deployed. I won't uh, spoil the uh, announcement. I'll request the CEO of CRDB to come up on stage and talk a little bit about this. We're very, very proud of our partnership with CRDB. I request uh, Mr. Abdul Musa Sirkela, the group CEO and managing director, who has been able to join us today to kindly come up on the stage, tell us a little bit more about the project itself and what critical milestone it has reached. Mr. Musa, please. Thank you, Kavita. Uh, let me also join my colleagues to, to congratulate uh, Madame Mafalda. And thanks again for the entire GCF for inviting us to be part, part of this conference. Very important. And I'm also moved with the theme which talks about moving from investment to impact. And I think the project which I'll be sharing with you, it moved to the same directions. My name is Abdul Sekela. I'm the group CEO for CRDB, which is a commercial bank in Tanzania, the biggest bank in, in the country. We do operate as well in Burundi, as well as recently in July, we opened our subsidiary in DRC. I think the presentation which was made by Mafalda and the US uh, delegates, but also the last two speakers, speaks about collaborations and partnerships. And I think moving from the investment to impact, it requires a collaboration with a mutual purpose between the parties. CRDB, we are happy that we really appreciate for GCF because we are the national accredited entity in 2019. Of course, for those who have been accredited, you understand the processes. And you're very much happy that you need to have the right partner to be able to succeed. And I must commend the entire GCF professional staff because they give you capability, they train you, and how to achieve. I'm happy with that. 2019 accreditations moved us to the next directions. And I think for Tanzania, the biggest sector is agriculture. I've been in the banking sector for 26 years. 
and all banks for those who are commercial, they are so cautious when we speak about agriculture. Following our accreditations and the capability we learned from UCFs, we are meant to see how best can we create impact. So we came up with innovative thinking on how we'd be able to touch many farmers and which kind of program we should come up with. Majority of the fund we do finance are very expensive, especially for commercial banks, because of dynamics in the banking sector. We are happy to be part of GCF, very much pleased. So we came up with a program called uh, Tanzania Agriculture Climate Adaptations Technology Deployment Program. And this is purely for food agri, looking the entire value chain from the small farmers to the entire value chain of the agriculture. The program's value is around $200 million. And we are very much pleased that GCF approved $100 million. And CIB obviously be putting $100 million. But the benefit between ourselves and GCF is about the package, it, how it has been innovated. Within $100 million for GCF, there's about 30% of it is a grant. And I think um, the grant compositions has touched the key tools, which is fundamentals and very challenging when you speak about agriculture. The grants is basically directed toward capacity building, directed in terms of technical tools for the farmers, providing guarantees to enable the farmer to borrow funds. But all this, this fund, this, this particular facilities is basically is the most affordable, the most affordable. And I think for Tanzania, majority of lending interest rate always in two digits. But this facility will be under single digit, which is beyond uh, uh, in terms of financial subsystems. But also the fund which has, this fund comes with two fundamental elements. One is for policy interventions. We are working with the governments to be able to look on the policies which create incentive for climate change investments for banks. And I'm happy and recognize the support we have received from our president office, which are dealing with climate change. They've been very supportive. We are working very closely with Central Bank in Tanzania, and we are now implementing some of guidelines to support the financial sector. And this could not be possible without being supported with GCF. The program is for five years. I, I believe in this room there is some banks, and you do get engaged with other international organizations. It is very rare when you are seeking financial support to be trained how to borrow. It's not easy. And do, uh, preparing a programs or even a proposal which will be approved by DCF require, I would say, a, a, num a number of resources in terms of professional. It's a very challenging. We are just being accredited, very not very much aware how to put a proposal. But DCF, when we gave out the concept, and I must appreciate the entire team, Kavita. They engage with the team in terms of how do we prepare the programs which will be seen as impactful and can be supported. GCF gave us a grant, fully funded for the entire programs, and we were able to source the required resource to prepare that. That's purely a grant of 100, about 600 plus million dollars. And it's not easy to get it when you're looking for counterpart to fund you. So we must appreciate for that. This particular grant has enabled us not only to generate capacity internally, but it has been enabled us to create stakeholders within the programs. So the program is five years implementations, and the funded part, part of the loan, which is about 70 million, it will be paid for 20 years. And the majority of long-term funding does not go that way. And when you speak agriculture, it, most of the agriculture facilities require 
a kind of a, of a long-term tenure, and the banks have a short terms. But the benefit and the most important element, which is very critical, it comes with uh, agriculture insurance for weather index. And the farmers in Tanzania, we depend on rainfall. It's non-predictive. And uh, with this program, we should be able to fund all the projects which are insurance covered and farmers will be insured. That means uh, de-risking the bank's exposure and we are enabling the farmers to be able to transform from where they are to the next level. And that's the impact we, we are trying to, to mention here. And the, according to the information which we have as today, I think CRDB as a commercial bank, we are currently the only commercial bank who has been able to access that big ticket from GCM. And the majority of banks, I think it's important to know that it is possible to achieve that. And we should be able to... Yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I think what I would like to highlight from the, the, the audience, when you speak about reaching many farmers, where the risk is based, the institution like GCF is the right part to work with. And I must comment, and I'm happy with the summary made about knowing Africa. I think the infrastructure is the biggest challenge. And these are the kind of facility which will enable us to grow and create the impact we are looking for. Thank you very much. Okay.